Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today I wanna to show you how you can highlight your mouse cursor. This is a comment that I've gotten a lot from viewers like you asking me how I highlight my mouse cursor in my tutorial videos. The benefit of highlighting your mouse cursor is it makes it easier for people to follow along with what you're explaining. So they could see where your mouse goes, they can more easily see what you're clicking on. This is something that's valuable if, let's say you're doing a screen recording with some type of instruction, or maybe you're on a Teams, a Zoom, or a Google Meet meeting where you're trying to explain some concept and you want people to follow along with what you're explaining. The good news is it's pretty easy to create a highlight around your cursor, and I'm gonna show you two different ways how you can do that. One of them doesn't require installing any software. Instead, all we're gonna do is we're gonna load a cursor file into Windows. Now, when you look at your mouse on Windows, that's really just what's called a cursor file. So it's kind of like a PNG or a GIF or a JPEG. And we're simply going to insert a cursor that has a halo around it. So that's by far the easiest way to do it, won't require installing anything. The second approach requires installing software. Uh, but it gives you a little bit more control. You get a few more capabilities where you can adjust the size of the halo, you can make it big or smaller, and it has a few other options. The second one is the one that I personally use. If there's one that you're more interested in, you can use the chapters down below to jump to the section of this video that you're most interested in. All right, well, why don't we get to the point and I'll show you how to highlight your pointer. Here I am on my PC, and first off, I wanna show you how you can add a halo around your mouse using functionality that's native to Windows. So first off, let's go ahead to the taskbar on the bottom, and within the search field, go ahead and type in mouse. This will bring up the best match for mouse settings. Let's go ahead and click on that. This opens up the mouse settings dialog, and within this dialog, let's go over onto the right-hand side and click on additional mouse options. This opens up our mouse properties. There are a whole bunch of tabs or pivots across the top. Let's click on the one that says pointers. Once we click on pointers, you'll see all the default Windows pointer icons. So you're probably familiar with this and it shows all the different variations depending on the situation that you're in on Windows. What I wanna do is I wanna add a halo around this mouse cursor. Now Windows by default comes with a whole bunch of different schemes. For instance, you could add a black cursor. You could also invert it. There are lots of different options here. However, by default, Windows doesn't have one that includes a halo around it. But don't worry, each one of these files here, this is a cursor file. Like I said before, you could think of that like a GIF, a PNG, or a JPEG. It's simply an image file or a cursor file. And what we wanna do is we wanna find a cursor file that has a halo around it. So where do we find a cursor file with a halo around it? Well, there are lots of websites online that let you download cursor files. And one of my favorites is Real World Designer. Here's the Real World Designer website. You can navigate there by going to rw-designer.com. I also have a link in the description of this video if you just wanna click on that. On this website, it looks a little dated. It looks like a website from maybe the late 90s or early 2000s, but there's lots of valuable content here. Now, not only can we download cursor images on this site, but they also provide software where you could create your own cursor files. Let's say that you have a knack for design. You could take a stab at creating your very own cursor. Before I pulled together this video, I went ahead and I tested out the cursor editor, and I found that it was pretty easy to go ahead and create my own cursor. But what we wanna do is lots of people have already gone ahead and they've created these cursor files. So let's go ahead and see what others have already created. I'm gonna go ahead and up on this top tab here, I'm gonna click on gallery. Within the gallery, you'll see a wide assortment of different cursor files. You could change your cursors to any one of these different options. So you have lots of different options. Let's say you want a ghost or you want Minecraft icons. You could basically go through here to your heart's content and find something that matches your personality. I wanna get a halo around my mouse, so let's go ahead and search for cursor highlight. Once it comes up, I see a whole bunch of options here. I'm gonna go ahead and order this by downloads so I see what is the most popular. Here I see a whole bunch of cursors that have halos around them. I could choose my color, whether I wanna go with a blue color, a yellow, a green. I could even get a set of cursors. Now once again, if I go back to the mouse properties, you'll see that all these different cursors, these make up a set of cursors. So let's say I wanted a halo around all these different variations that can appear, I could go ahead and download the set. 
In this case, just to keep things simple, I'm gonna go ahead and download the highlight cursor.cur file. When I click on it, this brings me to the download page. It's a pretty small file, it's only 4.2 kilobytes, and it's a .cur file. Now you don't have to worry about downloading this type of file, there's really no risk to your computer. A CUR file is just like downloading, say, a PNG, a JPEG, or a GIF. It's simply a data file. I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and download this file. My highlight cursor has finished downloading. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to show it in my download folder. I see here that the highlight cursor is in my download folder. I could just leave it here and then browse to it in the mouse settings, but if I'm planning on using this moving forward, I'd rather put it in a more permanent location and I wanna put it alongside all of my other cursor files. What I'm gonna do is press Control X to cut this item. I could also right click and then I'm gonna go down to cut. You could also copy if you wanna do that, but if you copy, it'll leave the original file in your downloads folder. I'm gonna go ahead and cut. Next, I'm gonna click on my C drive. This is where I have Windows installed and I'm gonna click on my Windows folder and within Windows, there's another subfolder called cursors. If we click on that, you'll see all of your different cursor files that you have on your computer. I'm gonna go ahead now and right click and I'm gonna paste my new cursor file in there. It'll ask you to provide administrator permissions because you are modifying a folder within Windows and I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue. So now you see that I have a new file alongside all my other cursor files called highlight cursor. So that looks good. Let me jump back into settings. Back in settings now, what I wanna do is when I have normal select highlighted, this is my standard mouse cursor, I'm gonna to go to browse. And within browse now, I wanna to browse to the new file that I just added. So I'm gonna type in highlight cursor, that'll bring me directly down to the file, and now I'm gonna click on open. One of the things you'll see now is it has my mouse cursor with the halo around it as the normal select icon or the cursor. One thing I could do now that I've loaded this in, I could go ahead and save the scheme. So let me click on save as, and I'm simply gonna call this mouse cursor highlight. If I ever wanna get rid of my mouse cursor highlight, I simply click up on scheme, and then I could go down to none, and that'll restore the default again, and that'll turn off the cursor highlighter. And let's say I'm doing my presentation, and I want people to be able to follow along more easily, I simply click on scheme, go to mouse cursor highlight, and now let me turn off my other cursor highlighter, now what I could do is I can click on apply and here now you'll see that my mouse cursor appears with a yellow halo around it. Once again, once I'm done, I go to no, apply, my halo is gone and here I can bring it back again. That was the first technique for how you could apply a halo around your cursor using Windows. Next, I wanna show you an application or some software that you could download that will give you even more control over what your cursor looks like. And this is also free, but it does require an install. This is personally what I use in my tutorial videos to add a halo around my mouse. Open up your web browser and navigate to the following website. Now, once again, I have the website URL in the description of this video. You could simply click on that instead of typing this in. Now there's a tool developed by Professor Luc Boisvert at the University of Puget Sound. He's an organic chemistry professor, but on the side, he went ahead and he developed a cursor highlighter tool to help with teaching his classes and to help his colleagues with te teaching their classes. Now the nice thing about this tool is it's completely free and it has quite a bit of functionality. So many thanks to Luke for pulling this together. On his site, what we're gonna do is let's scroll down towards the bottom of the page and you'll see a tool called the Cursor Highlighter version 2.2. Now what we need to do is to run the Cursor Highlighter, first off, we need to download an application called Auto Hotkey. Now here's Auto Hotkey. So what is it? Well, with Auto Hotkey, it's a free open source application that allows you to write custom scripts. And Luke has used this to create a tool that adds a halo around your mouse. Go ahead and first off install download and then install auto hotkey. And once you've done that, return to the website, the Boisvert Lab. On this website then, the next thing we wanna do is download the AHK script. Now this is an auto hotkey file. It's a script file that Luke pulled together and we're gonna download this and then run it. I'm gonna go ahead now and click on download. He has a download file from drive.google.com. Let's go ahead and click on download. It's finished downloading the cursor highlighter. Let's go ahead and view it in the folder.
I see in my downloads folder the cursor highlighter file. To launch it, all I have to do is double click on it. Now let's say that at some point I decide that I no longer need the cursor highlighter and I want to get rid of it. All I have to do is delete this file and then I could also go back and uninstall the auto hotkey app if I don't have any other uses for it outside of the cursor highlighter. Let's go ahead and click on the cursor highlighter and before I do that I'm going to turn off the cursor highlighter that I'm currently using. Let's go ahead and double click on this. When you double click on it you'll see a prompt appear that says whether you want to create a settings file. Now all of the settings we configure like the color of the halo, the size of the halo, any shortcut keys that you use to launch the cursor highlighter, all of them are stored in this settings file. So let's go ahead and click on yes. Once I click on yes, you'll see now that my mouse has a yellow halo appearing around it. So we have our halo that looks great. And one of the benefits of using this software as opposed to the technique where you do it through Windows is not only does my mouse arrow or cursor have the halo around it, but here if I go to say resize a window, all of the other cursors have the halo as well. So within Windows, if you wanted this, you'd have to add a halo for each individual icon or you'd have to load a, a cursor set with the halo. Here, it simply applies it everywhere for you. So it's a little bit easier to apply. Now I wanna show some of the customizations for the cursor highlighter. And to pull up the customizations, let's go down to our taskbar. And within the tray, let's click on here and you'll see an icon that appears called the cursor highlighter. It has a cursor icon in a blue circle. If we right click on that, it'll expose a whole bunch of settings for the cursor highlighter. I could exit the cursor highlighter. I could access the full set of settings. And I also have some quick actions that I could take here if say I wanna to switch to a picture cursor or if I wanna to switch to cursor focus. I'll show what those are in a moment. Let's jump into the broader settings menu. Here within settings, there are a few different settings I wanna highlight. You have lots of different options here, so feel free to peruse and play around with it to see what works for your needs. I'll call out some of the ones that I think are most interesting. Here at the top, there's a color highlight option, and that's currently what I have. I have my mouse cursor with a color highlighted around it. Next, you could also have a picture file. So let's say I'm presenting and let's say I'm writing on my screen with say a pen. I could have a pen icon appear. And lastly, there's another option called focus. When I click on that, it inverts it where the focus is right around my cursor and everything else is grayed out. I'm gonna go ahead, let's turn color highlight back on, and then you have a few other settings down below. You could experiment with those. Next, I wanna click on highlight settings. Now this is neat where you have control over, first off, how big the halo is. So let's say I wanted to make a really big halo. I could adjust the width and the height. Here I have a perfect circle, but you could also make it more of an oval. But there I have a massive highlight around my mouse. You can also set the opacity. And so what that means is if I set a high opacity level, so if I make it opaque, you won't be able to see through. And then I could set it all the way so it's super low, so you see a very light opacity around my cursor. I'm gonna set it to about the middle, 125, I like that. Next, you could also choose the highlight color. And maybe before I do that, let me just reduce the size of my halo. Here I could click on the highlight color and I could choose any color that I want. Maybe I'll go with more of a blue color here. I kind of like blue. I think it's a nice, just soothing color. Now that we've looked at some of the highlight settings, let's see what we could do here within highlight left click. So here when I click my left mouse button, currently nothing happens. One thing I could do is I could hide the highlighting when I click. So here I'll show an example. When I click, the halo disappears. So this helps reinforce to your viewers that you're clicking on something. Alternatively, I can make it stand out even more where I show a different color when I click. So here I could click and there it changes it to a pinkish type color or a violet type color. And here again, I could also adjust the width, the height, and also the opacity as well as the color. I could do the same on right click as well. And then down here, I have picture settings. So previously we saw that there was a pen. I could go ahead and load any picture that I want. You could set the different colors, the different size. So lots of different controls for the picture that you add in. And lastly, there are also focus settings. And once again, I showed focus in the general view, but here too, you can set the size and the opacity for it. The last thing I wanna show within this view is you can also set different hotkeys to either turn on or turn off the highlighter, the picture, the focus. So let's say you're giving a presentation. Maybe you wanna start with the highlighting first 
and then you want people to really focus in on something, you could set a hotkey where you then show the cursor focus. So let me show an example. So let's say for my cursor highlighter, maybe I'll set control shift and let's go with the, why don't we go with the, uh, let's say the F7 key. And now I'm gonna go ahead and save it. So when I press control shift F7, my cursor highlighter disappears. When I click it again, it brings it back. So just a nice way I could either activate or deactivate the halo using shortcut keys without needing to open up the app and then manually turn it on or off. If you're not a big fan of shortcut keys, there is another neat way you could turn it on and off. So down here on my taskbar, if I go back to the tray, I could simply click on the cursor highlighter and that turns it off or I could click on it again and that'll turn it on. Now let's say that I'm done with doing the cursor highlighting. I could simply right click on this and then I could exit the cursor highlighter and that'll close it. And then I'll no longer have the halo around my mouse. I'm back on my desktop and there's one last thing I wanna show. Now I personally use OBS or Open Broadcaster software for all my screen recording. There's one additional step that you have to take to make sure that OBS can capture your mouse cursor. I'm gonna go ahead and open up OBS. I'm currently using it to record this tutorial here. To make sure that OBS can record your mouse, you need to have a display capture set up. Now, if this is your first time ever seeing OBS, but you're intrigued and you would like to use OBS to record your screen, I've done a video on it before, and you can also find that in the description of this video. That'll show you the basics of how to use OBS. So within OBS, assuming that you have some basic understanding of how to work it, simply right click on display capture and go to properties. Within properties, there's a checkbox here called capture cursor. If I uncheck that, you'll no longer see my cursor. Now this is kind of funny because I have the halo turned on on the cursor, so you still see the halo, but you no longer see the cursor. If I check the box again, now you see the cursor again. So this also helps that when you're recording your screen using OBS, you wanna make sure that this box is checked to make it as easy as possible for your audience to follow along. All right, well that was a quick look at how you can highlight your mouse cursor either using native functionality that's available as part of Windows or using separate software that you could install that gives you a little bit more control and flexibility. And that's the one that I personally use to highlight my mouse. If you found this video helpful and you now know how to highlight your mouse, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see future videos like this, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if there are any other video topics that you wanna see me cover, leave a comment down below. That's how I build my list of videos to create. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye.